I'm Drew Scanlon. I'm exploring the world through the lens of games, and I'm doing it with the support of people like you on Patreon. Help us out at patreon.com slash clothmap. Nadam Festival, which kicks off with an impressive opening ceremony, is an annual celebration of Mongolian culture and revolves around competition in three events, horse racing, archery, and wrestling. These are traditionally known as the three games of men, but it's a bit of a misnomer since women compete in two of the events, including the first of the three games to take place over the multi-day festival, horse racing. But men in this case is doubly wrong, because the riders are children. (laughs) On the outskirts of the capital city of Ulaanbaatar, people from all over the country gather to watch and compete in a discipline that goes back thousands of years. Like the other games of Nadam, the riding routes run deep in Mongolia, a culture known throughout history for prowess on the horse. As our guide Hoso explained, this has a lot to do with the legacy left by Genghis Khan, or as they say in Mongolia, Chinggis Khan. Yeah, I think it's related to our history. Um, I'm sure you guys know that uh, Chinggis Khan, he created one of the biggest Mongolian empire. Horse riding, archery, And um, the wrestling is one of the important sports to train soldiers. And now it has become one of the national holiday sports of Mongolia. It's very, very traditional sports of Mongolia. Today, this ancient discipline is being broadcast on television across the country. And this is a national competition. So all the top horses and the top jockeys are here. People say that this is like the Olympics of Mongolia. Yeah. First, the riders check in and submit to an inspection. They're gonna get their fingerprints checked to make sure that it's the right kid and the right horse. And each jockey needs to have a helmet and uh, protection for the elbow and the knees as well. It can be a motley assortment of equipment. We saw rain boots and more than a few bike helmets. But as long as everything's within safety guidelines, they're good to go. And each jockey has a GPS tracker as well, in case if something happens to them. Is they get lost? Get lost or fall down and get injured or anything like that. The Mongolian horse is smaller than average, but many of the riders still need a bit of help to mount their steeds. The jockeys, they're children. They're children, yeah. They're children. They're aged between 5 and 13. It's in our spirit. It's in our history. There's an old saying, in Mongolia, that uh, Mongolian kids learn to ride horse before start to talk. So they love horses and they start at a very young age. And yeah, some of them ride bareback, in case I needed any more proof that these kids are way tougher than me. Is that a girl? Yeah, I think that's definitely a girl. The races are grouped by age of the horse, not the rider. These horses are in the three-year-old group and are heading to another inspection to verify their age by counting the number of teeth. They're gonna count the teeth and then they're gonna um, go to the start line down there and then they're gonna race back and this would be the finish line. I think it's gonna be at least three, four hundred horses. And with so many horses, this process takes a while. Thankfully, like any good sporting event, there's a concession area. We can go to any of these because they're all food courts, I think. Inside one of these structures, called a gur, we warmed up with some milk tea and a snack called hoshur. And this is only served during Nadam festivals? This shape is, yes. Okay. <laughs> Usually it's half round. Okay. And because it's Nadam, it's full round. This okay. is specially made Nadam hoshur. It's usually with beef or lamb inside. Okay. And onion, salt, and um, it's fried. 
In order to eat it, you need to flip it around, roll it around. Okay. So I know that in Europe, people put sugar in their milk tea, but uh -huh. Mongolians put salt. So feel free to try and let me know what okay. you think. <laughs> That's really good. Nice and soft. That's good, right? And it was just made right over there. Yes, it is. All right, Mongolian milk tea. Milk tea, cow milk. Cow milk. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's just straight up yeah. hot milk. It, it tastes so good right now. It is cold out there. When we returned to our press box, the audience had showed up, but the riders couldn't be seen since the starting line is on the other side of these hills. The older the horse, the longer they have to run. Yes, um, the youngest one starts from 10 kilometers, and the oldest one is about 26, 30 kilometers. It depends on the horse's age. The three-year-old group starts about 16 kilometers away, but eventually they got close enough to see. Watching these hills darken with hundreds of Mongolian riders, it was frighteningly easy to imagine myself centuries in the past in the path of a Mongol force. A group of five ceremonial riders stood by to intercept the leaders and ride with them across the finish line. seemed no worse for wear, though some arrived back without helmets and some horses without riders. Thankfully, chase vehicles flank the race the whole way, in case somebody needs a ride. I couldn't imagine doing this as a kid, but since many of these riders grew up on horses, they are unsurprisingly pretty nonchalant about the whole thing. How old are you? Out of ten. Out of ten. Ten, ten years old. How was the race? It was really nice. How many races has he competed in? About five races he's wow. been to. He, he, he is proud of himself. He's happy with what he did. How old are you? 11. Uh, how long have you been riding horses? He's been racing for five years. Wow. Was the race very long? In the water, I go It was it was okay. What do you want to be when you grow up? Uh Yeah, he wants to be the owner of the horses. <laughs> I couldn't get over seeing five year olds heading out on this race course alone. But as we learned, Mongolian kids are tough and riding is in their blood. In this way, this sporting event gives perhaps the best sense of the proud and hardy Mongolia I could have asked for. Cloth Map is possible only because of our supporters on Patreon. If you liked this video and want to keep seeing more like it, we'd love to have you with us.